more so in, in graduate school, I was practicing at least two to six hours a day. Mm -hmm. I remember. Um, you remember, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> um, and, and playing a variety of instruments, right? It wasn't just drum set, but it was drum set and marimba and vibraphone and a lot of other instruments. Um, and I, I started to develop like a routine. I'm, I'm a very routine oriented person. Um, and I like to have a, a, have a system. So I developed a routine and I noticed that the more I um, warmed up and the more I stretched, uh, the quicker I was learning things. Like when I had my music and I was learning music and pieces to play with groups, I was learning it faster and I was learning more efficiently. And not only that, um, I wasn't developing some of the, the problems, the stress and strain problems that other people were developing. I was also doing Tai Chi at the time, which I think really helped. Um, anyway, I started to, um, I was a member of the per Percussive Art Society, and I started to read their magazines, and especially the articles by Darren Workman, who um, does all of their health and wellness articles. And he, um, I think he lives in Texas, and he is not only a drummer who is in a band and performs a lot, but he's also a chiropractor with a chiropractor business. And he would write these articles that were very detailed in how to take care of your body and how to make sure that you could play a four-hour gig and not feel the stress of that after months and months of playing four-hour gigs. Um, okay, so basically, your body has a natural alignment, natural position. So setting up your drum set ergonomically means that you are not holding your body in a position that's unnatural for, for a long period of time. Um, and, and that basically centers around um, your stool position and, and the instruments you are playing on the most, your bass drum, your hi-hat, your snare drum, and your ride cymbal. You're moving around, hit your toms and your crash cymbals, and that's fine, that's, that's movement. But when you're sitting in this position with your ride and your snare drum for a long, that's the position you're in for most of the night, or here. So you wanna make sure that those things are not pulling your, your body out of position. Um, let's, here, I'm gonna get the bass drum put on here and then um, I'm gonna talk about the ride cymbal. Okay. Playing the ride cymbal the way it is right now, and I just kinda stuck this up on the stand, haven't angled it at all, but if I were to leave it where it is right now, that would be pretty, awful to, to sit and play for four hours. Right. Can you tell where on my body I would start feeling stress after a couple hours of playing? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, everything here you want to have relaxed. When you're relaxed, if I don't have anything in my hand and I'm relaxed, my arm naturally is just falling at my side. You want that position when you're playing ride cymbal. So my ride cymbal, usually when I set up my drum set, the very first thing I set up is my stool. I sit down on it, and I do this. And that's where my ride cymbal needs to go. So I don't move my body to meet where my ride cymbal is. I move the ride cymbal to meet how my body is aligned. So if I was playing my, my ride cymbal right now, this part of my arm is relaxed. Where I have it here, I'm now using these muscles are constantly contracting. If that was like this, you know, again, four hour gig, this muscle is now being used for four hours. Whereas if I'm playing here, it's not being used at all, it's relaxed for four hours. So, who's gonna start feeling strain and stress and back pain, you know, after, after a few gigs? The drummer who plays like this or the drummer who plays like this? So, let me address your issue of, of lower back pain. Lower back pain is probably, um, I would say the first thing to look at is your stool height. Yeah, I have mine all the way up. All the way up? All the way. Um, basically, and, and everybody, every person's body is different. Everybody's going to have a different normal, different, you know, angles that, that work for their body. That's why, you know, you watch your favorite drummer and you go, oh, I'm going to set up just like him. Well, that might not work for your body, you know. I'm a 
girl. I'm five foot three on good day. And <laughs> yeah, I'm five foot two. So <laughs> I play much differently than most most people in town. When I go and, and somebody's backlining drums and I have to use their drum set, it's usually pretty uncomfortable um, because I do set up a lot differently because of my height. Um, so when your stool is too high, when my stool is too high, what that causes is this. You lean That's over your drum set while you're playing. That's what I do. Yeah, you're leaning over your drum set while playing. Okay, your back, your spine, the bones are designed to be like, like a stack of building blocks, mm -hmm. right? When you sit up perfectly straight, your bones support your body, right? When you do this, it's right, okay. you're, you're tilting each one on top yeah. of itself, and, and to hold your body up, it's now the muscles of, that go yeah. along your back that are, that are holding you up. So again, what I was talking about with the ride symbol, it's keeping that muscle back. contracted the whole time, mm -hmm. if you're doing this all night, you're using those lower so, back muscles to keep your, your, your top up all night. So if you were sitting like this, it's not going to strain any muscles because it's, it's bone that's supporting you. Mm -hmm. So you always want, if you can, bone to be supporting. So that's usually what happens when you sit So, high. But I keep my stand drum high too, and I right. don't feel like if I, if I go lower that I, like, I can't get the snare drum in the right spot if I lower this. Your legs are in the way, like to get a rim shot? Yeah. That's like the kind of struggle I, like, what do I do as far as like the stool height, but then like where are the drums at so I can get? I mean, I, I definitely get you. There's, there's, there's got to be like some sort of comfort zone, some kind of balance between the height of, that you are sitting and the height and angle of your drums. Mm -hmm. So, um, should I try you lowering? might find, um, I would say if you if you are having pain, and that's that's the biggest. I mean, yeah, definitely. That's like the biggest. If I play for a long time, I can tell which yes. Um, <laughs> pain is a warning, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of of injury. Yeah. The injury is on its way, right? If you don't take care of pain and 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 correct something, eventually pain becomes injury, and mm -hmm. injuries can be you know, more long-term than, than you want. So, um, I would try to to lower maybe just an inch, yeah. or maybe even a half an inch, just a little bit, um, and then lower your snare drum too, and if your leg's getting in the way, um, you might find that you, your comfort position now, you have to get yourself a little bit out of that, and eventually after practicing for a few months, it becomes a new comfort yeah, zone. That's because, I because, yeah, I mean, you do one movement long enough and you can make it feel comfortable. If I was doing this for a while, that would start to feel natural to me. Yeah. You know, your body has an, an amazing ability to adjust mm -hmm. and, and to learn mus muscle memory, and then all of a sudden this bad technique feels natural to me. Mm -hmm. So you might find that, that lowering your stool and, and changing your standard for now feels really awkward and feels mm -hmm. wrong, but if you're not getting the back pain, maybe you can adjust to, to a, you know, a month down the road that doesn't feel so awkward anymore. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's really the most important thing because pain can, can stop you from playing. Let me actually, I'll just show you some lower back stretches. That's what Part of the, what I was going to do today was also like warming up and yeah. stretching. Um, <clears throat> sitting your seat too low, which I know you don't do, but. Um, Vinny Caluda sits really, sits really low. But he also, um, he also angles his drums up, so I think. Who's that group that you guys just opened for at the Union? Uh, that we were playing at. You were playing his drum set, sitting uh, sideways. Oh, uh, Papadocio. Papadocio. Yeah. That drummer sits really low. Yeah, he and also angles like, his drums like Vinny kind of. Well, you have to, yeah. right? If you're going to sit get that, a rim shot. if you're going to sit that low, you yeah. have to adjust the height of your drums. Mm -hmm. But sitting too low <laughs> causes causes the opposite kind of strain in your back because when you sit too low, it usually causes you to lean back a little bit. I mean, he's tilting all of his drums this way, and now he's he's playing like this, yeah. which um, it's the opposite problem that I'm Yeah, having. it's opposite, yeah. But, but I see a lot of drummers doing that too, where they're, they're playing like this all night. And then instead of, you know, the lower back muscles being activated all night, now you're kind of, you know, a little bit higher, but it's still it's still going to strain your back. Um, so, just out of curiosity, somebody who 
used to play on a half broken snare drum stand and uh, sat in a wooden chair uh, at the drum stand. But you never played for like four hours, right? <clears throat> Not for four hours. This isn't uh, so much about muscles, but I would always seem to smack myself in the leg with the stick. <laughs> Um, is it, where is it recommended to put the snare drum, typically, on um, your average drum set, in terms of height? Well, okay, we have to go back to a good position. You basically, man, I just went through this with one of my students, and he was trying to, uh, to tilt his snare drum too much, and I was trying to talk him out of it. Um, he was playing on my drum set, I was teaching a lesson, and he, was like, and he stopped, and he was like, I gotta, I gotta move the snare drum, and he starts to tilt it way down. And I'm going like, whoa, what are you doing? You know, that, that's, that's not good for where you're sitting. Um, and he's like, oh, this is how I have it at home. Again, one of those, it was his comfort zone, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was, it was right. He yeah. was more comfortable with it, but, but it wasn't doing what he needed to do. Because he was tilting it so much that he couldn't get a rim shot. Now, you want your snare drum in a position where you have access to all of the sounds the snare drum can produce, right? But you also don't want to do what I call the lazy drummer. This is what I do for all my young students. I'm like, lazy drummer, <laughs> when they do this. See what I'm doing with my hand? Oh. <laughs> I'm resting it on my leg. I'm like, what is your hand too heavy to hold it up in the air? <laughs> you're lazy. <laughs> so, so whenever you're playing, you don't want your hand to be in the way, your leg to be in the way of your hand. You want to be, you know, Hopefully, if you're sitting upright, now this is actually just a little bit too low for me still, but if, if you're sitting upright, your hand should be hovering just a little bit above your leg, never resting on your leg, and never having your leg get in the way of your stroke. Keeping your hand low, but all I have to do is pull back a little bit, and I can get my rim shot. What if you... I'm just, I hate, to, I hate, so to, be, awesome. hate to be devil's advocate, but devil's what advocate. if you want a rim shot with more wood on it? There? Yeah. Um, if I wanted to rim shot, I would, I, would, I, would, I would push forward. Okay. But like, Quest, Quest, like, plays, like, in the middle of his, like... In the middle? Yeah. yeah and then he puts a whole damn stick across the, the drum. Which, yeah. like, the whole... And he has a longer stick, yeah. too, so... <laughs> you can't even play <laughs> drums in here without any cymbals. <laughs> you get it? So, um... <laughs> So you just you would just move. I, I would push. Okay. I would push forward. My technique is very German style. So so if I wasn't here, I'd be I'd be here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I never I never cross over in front of my body. I it's usually don't either. But... It's not comfortable for me because I never talking about stick position. I never do French. Yeah. yeah. Unless I'm like over oh, right, yeah. um, So how many different cultures have hand position? Like, is there French? French, German, and American. Is, is American the sloppiest? What <laughs> <laughs> the coolest? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lower back. Yeah. Stretches. Lower okay. Back. There's two stretches that I'm going to show you that you should do really every day before and after you play. The best, the best thing to do, um, and this was the warm up routine I developed that I was talking about before when I was a graduate student. Um, I would come in about an hour before my first class in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, the first thing I would do, I, I'd start on um, either a practice pad, doing the snare drum, and I would go through like the first page of the stick control book with a metronome. Okay. I did that almost every day. If I didn't do that, then I'd start on marimba with scales, and I'd run through all my major scales, one note at a time, up and down, and I'd do octaves with two hands. I had this whole routine that I, that I would go through, and I'd kind of alternate between starting on the pad or starting on the marimba. But after I did about 10 minutes of, of that, then I would do stretches. And um, I would do at least these three things. Let me show you through. OK. Um, first thing you do, you know what ragdoll stretch is? No. Ragdoll stretch. I learned this in marching band, so I thought maybe you'd do it in marching band. Ragdoll stretch is where you let your, the top of your body just fold over on, on, on the bottom like this. Mm -hmm. Just completely you know, let, let the top relax and hang there for a good minute. And then as slowly as possible, stack one vertebrae on top of the next, and, and just keep letting the upper body be as relaxed as possible and as heavy as possible, mm -hmm. and roll up. And then I finish by, by reaching up and stretching as hard as I could up. Mm -hmm. And that just, again, if you're going to be playing drum set, that's a good one for your back, because it just 
kind of takes everything and takes the pressure off. By hanging over, you, you're taking the pressure off those joints for a minute okay. and, then, and then letting them stack back up on each other. Uh -huh. um, that was a good one. For lower back, there's a muscle, I don't know the name of it, but there's a muscle that um, goes around your hips <laughs> that when it gets tight, when it, it's, it has to do with, with uh, what's this muscle called? Hams, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when those are tight, it takes your whole like pelvic area and pulls it forward, mm -hmm. and that can put some strain on your back. So honestly, doing this yeah. really helps, especially when you're sitting for so long. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stretches that you should do as a drummer is um, think about the position that you're in the most, right, mm -hmm. and do the opposite. Okay. Right, you get kind of locked into these positions, and if you don't put your joints, you know, in the opposite position just a little bit to stretch them, and they get kind of tight and locked here. And tightness is where a lot of injury comes from for a drummer. Yeah. Um, so, so your legs are always like this. Yeah. <laughs> so take them the opposite way. Okay. And, and stretch it for a little bit. Same thing with your arms. They're like this so much. Mm -hmm. One of the best stretches you can do is just reaching out and putting your fingertips behind you. Yeah. That stretches all the way from your fingertips, all the way up your arm into your into your, uh, your shoulder in the front of your chest. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a flat wall. Putting, doing that, putting your hand against the wall, and then looking the opposite direction, mm -hmm. that stretches everything really well. Okay. I just showed these so two. Uh, how long do you do the stretches for? Usually. Like 15 minutes or? Not even. Not even? Okay. I would, I would do the ragdoll. I would stretch, as long as you do it before I would stretch my happens. legs. I would do some of those arm stretches. Yeah. Um, and then I'd go back to playing a little bit. And then right. periodically, while you're playing, if I was going to play for, you know, practice and then have a rehearsal and then come back to practicing or, you know, like you do in, in college, I would make sure that um, for every hour that you play, you want to take about 10 minutes off mm -hmm. and, and let yourself relax, 10 to 15 minutes. And during those 10 or 15 minutes, you know, stretch out just a little bit again. 